MP3 players and portable media players used to be the electronic devices that everybody carried around. MP3s of the past usually followed this form factor. Basically a flash drive with a couple of buttons, screen, and a headphone port. Smartphones, however, took over this market segment, and these devices were mostly rendered obsolete. Nowadays, the only market that exists for such dedicated music devices is in the boutique hi-fi audiophile class. In this video, I'll be reviewing one of these boutique devices, the Fio X5 Mark II. I got this example uh, second-hand from an online seller for 125 Canadian dollars with the box and two 128 gigabyte micro SD cards. Fio is a Chinese company specializing in high-end portable auto equipment such as media players like this one and portable amplifiers. Most of their newer devices are touchscreen and run Android OS. This one is slightly older and runs a custom Linux-based OS. On the outside it looks very similar to a well-known device, the iPod Classic. It's kind of like what a pro version of the Classic would have potentially looked like. We have a mechanical scroll wheel and several functions buttons. The body is made entirely out of machined aluminum with the front and sides made of one solid piece. On the top we have not one, but two headphone jacks. However, they're not the same. As you can see, one says line coax out and the other one has the headphones logo on that. I'll talk about that later. On the bottom we have two micro SD card slots that can hold up to 120 gigabytes each. The device does not have any internal memory. In the middle is a micro USB port for hooking it up to your computer. Now I've found that the transfer speeds are not very good. It uses USB 2.0 but it seems to peak at only about 5 megabytes a second when copying files. When you hold the power button for a few seconds, it presents the boot screen. The boot animation is a bit cheesy looking, but uh, yeah, once you're fully loaded into the UI, it actually looks quite nice as you can see. The screen is a colorful IPS LCD with a pretty high pixel density. So it's 2.4 inches diagonal and has a resolution of 400 by 360 pixels. When the player is turned on, the uh, power button glows blue. A lot of the other FIO players have that uh, blue light down here, but this one has it right on the power button. When it's charging, that light turns red, and when it's fully charged, it turns green. These are the volume buttons. So volume up and volume down. You can also use the scroll wheel as volume, but with the screen turned off, only these work as the volume buttons. On the front of the unit we have five buttons. So in the middle is your select button. This is your menu and special features button. This is the return button. And this is forward track and go back one track. There is no buttons on the actual scroll wheel because it's just a circular mechanical wheel. To wake up the device you tap the power button, the screen turns on, and this is what your main menu looks like. So you have a now playing option, play by category option, browse files, play settings, and system settings. At the very top is the volume level, so it goes from 0 to 120. Your gain level, so you can either set the gain to low or to high. I'll talk about that later on. Uh, which option you've selected and your micro SD card indicator. It's showing two right now which means that there's two cards inserted into the player. And on the right you have your battery indicator. 
I'm starting from the left. Right now there is no music that's playing, so going into now playing will open up your entire music collection. And you can pick a song. See, when I exit there it goes from play by category because it opens this folder up so I can find a song to play. So anyways, moving on to um, play by category. You can either pick all songs, album, artist, genre, collection, playlists, and recently played. So this media player obviously can read the metadata from your audio files and it groups it uh, into the according folder. All songs is just your entire music collection put together as a large list of songs. Albums, of course, reads the album metadata of your particular music file and uh, you can play by album. Now to actually find an album to search on this device, it's kind of interesting because I kind of had to figure this out on my own. Basically the uh, special function key, you have to hold that down and it gives you these letters. Now say I want to find an album, say I want to find Metamorphosis by Jean-Michel Jarre. I would scroll over to M, press that, and all my albums with M come up. There's Metamorphosis, and here's the Metamorphosis album. It's the same with uh, artists and genre. Collection is basically a favorites list. Probably a more appropriate uh, term for this would be favorites, but they used collection for it. But it's basically each song you listen to, it has a little heart. And if you fill in that heart, that song goes into this list. It's kind of like a singular playlist, if you want to call it that. Now the next one, which is actual playlists, this one, you can copy M3U files with information on uh, specific tracks. So uh, you can make your own playlist files on the computer and add them to this device and it'll read them. Or you can make your own playlists from the player itself. Uh, it's not the most intuitive of um, options, or uh, procedures rather, but it is possible, and you can add multiple playlists. And Recently Played is uh, your last bunch of songs that you've listened to. It records a list of them. The next option, which is Browse Files, uh, this basically reads the files without any of the metadata. It reads them straight from the SD cards. Now what I mean by that is it reads the file names as you've named it on the computer. It doesn't read the track titles, artists, or albums. It just reads the file name. On this device and many other of these uh, high-res audio players, this ties in with this update media library option. So every time you copy a song or an album or any file to this device. Update Media Library is what reads all the metadata of the songs as it's doing now and allows the player to recognize audio tracks by their specific metadata. If you don't have this option set to auto or it's turned off, then the uh, Browse by category function won't work. I've got it set to auto, so every time I add a track or file to this device from my computer, it'll automatically synchronize and make the media information available for me. On iPhones, iPods, and other MP3 players, this is done automatically, but on these devices, you have the option to make it manual. The next option is play settings. So play settings, when you compare it to system settings, play settings gives you all the options relating to audio playback and sound. Going in there, the first option is play mode. So these are your uh, how you want to uh, play the music. So if, whether you want to play sequential, shuffle, repeat, you have all the options here. Resume mode is, I'll give a scenario, you've been listening to a song you stop listening to that song and you've fully turned the player off. If you've got resume mode set to off, then the player won't remember what song you've been listening to. You're going to have to find a new song and start that one. If you've got it set to last song, it'll start from the last song you were listening to, but from the very beginning. And last position is the last song you were listening to and the last position you were at. 
Gapless playback is just, um, there is no pause between the start of a new song, so when the old, when the, when your previous song finishes, there is no pause, so you can't, uh, directly tell when the new song starts. I've got that set to on. Maximum volume is what it, what exactly what it says. If you want to have it set to 120, that's the maximum volume that the uh, device can go up to. But if you want to limit the uh, maximum volume of the device, then you can reduce it downwards. You could call it a safety feature if you want. Power on volume allows you to specify what volume you want the player to be fixed at every time it starts up. So when you have it set to last setting, it remembers the volume you have it set at. So I say I've got it to uh, 56, and I turn it off. When I turn it back on, it'll be set to 56. But if I have it set to fixed, then it's going to start up with the volume that I have specified in the option below. So if I have it set to 60, if I should turn this player off and turn it back on, it won't remember 56, it'll start back up to 60. And this can be changed from 0 to 120. Now gain, so the G equals L up there, right now gain is set to low. Gain is the power of the amplifier. So in layman's terms, it basically means if you have a set of headphones with a low resistance, they don't need much power to be driven. So you can set that to L. But if you have a pair of headphones that is with a high resistance, then you set it to H, which is high, and it changes up there as well. So headphones that have like conventional headphones that are 32 ohms would be f perfectly fine with a gain of L. But say your headphones are more than 100 ohms or so, then you'd probably set that to H. So that the uh, volume is enough, because if you've got it set to L and you've got high resistance headphones, then it's going to be very quiet. Replay Gain, I believe, analyzes the uh, loudness of a bunch of files and kind of equalizes them so that they sound more uniform. Now, I haven't used this feature, so I've got it set to none, but you can set it to track or album. The equalizer is allows you to customize the, uh, the sound of this device. So there's a custom equalizer where you can play with all the uh, different bands here. You can set it to off or flat. There's also a couple of pre-customized ones. There's rock, classical, jazz, pop, dance, vocal, blues, metal, and back to custom. Something also interesting about this equalizer is that it dynamically normalizes the volume. So even if you were to crank this all the way to maximum, it's not going to clip the sound. The player itself balances it out. And uh, you'll notice that when you've got certain ones that are all the way to the top and other ones that are all the way to the bottom, the uh, overall volume is going to be a little bit quieter versus, you know, compared to off where they're all flat, this would be a little bit louder when compared to custom at the same volume level. For the low-pass filters, it gives you two options, gradual and steep. But honestly, I haven't really noticed much of a difference in the sound. So maybe it's just my headphones or I just don't hear it, but there probably is a difference, I just don't really hear it too much. So I've got that left at uh, gradual. Line-out mode allows you to change the uh, volume control for the second port. So if you have it set to fixed level, then it bypasses the volume and um, the volume control has no effect on the output of this. If you've got it, like the next uh, option here ties in with it. If it's set to zero decibels, then this is outputting at full volume. So you can also set it to volume adjustable and now the volume has control over the second port. But if you have it set it to fixed, it just outputs full power. Fixed level gives you an extra layer of control over the uh, fixed level of the, out, the line out mode. So zero decibels means full power. But if your uh, stereo system is clipping for some reason, then you can reduce it to minus three decibels, minus six, go back to zero. So this is basically like a fine tune adjustment uh, just in case if your audio system is clipping at full power which I think is pretty neat. I've used this feature a couple of times when plugging it into uh, a car's audio system because it clipped at zero. Balance allows you to uh, balance the sound more to the left or to the right. 
You'd have it at zero for equal left and right. Playthrough folders is just um, once one folder is finished, it starts the next one. And finally, system settings. So the first option is the language. I have it set to English. There are several languages that you can pick. Update media library, I already talked about that in the beginning. It's basically the player creates a library of the metadata of the files that you've copied onto it. Keylock settings, so this allows you to specify what buttons can uh, function with the screen turned off. So in the beginning I said that only these three buttons uh, control the player with the, with the screen turned off. Now that's because I've got it set to lock screen 1, but if you have it set to lock screen 2, you add the central uh, select button as a wake button as well. And if you go on lock screen 3, then these can also wake the player as well. I've got it set to lock screen 1 because if you've got this thing in your pocket, then this is pretty easy to press. So accidental presses might cause some issues. Screen timeout is uh, your screen saver, basically. After 60 seconds, the screen turns off. You can modify that. And the light bulb at the end means that the screen never turns off. Brightness, you've got several options here. I have it set to the middle. The screen is nice and bright, I'd say. Even at this uh, brightness level, it's perfectly readable in the sun. Idle standby, now I've never used this too much, but I'm assuming that this means that the player does not turn off fully when you haven't used it for a while. So if you have it sitting on your desk and the screen turns off, that it won't fully turn off on its own. So that's turned on. After five minutes, uh, it'll go into like a light sleep mode. So uh, kind of like on your computer when you go on sleep and it uh, readily turns on when you kind of like that. You push the button again and it turns on immediately. Now the next function is sleep is a bit misleading in its title. This should be called sleep timer rather. Uh, the next one sleep timer, but uh, calling it sleep is a bit misleading because when you turn that on, then a little clock appears at the top here's in the top right there. So the sleep timer on this, so you're listening to music and you want to fall asleep to the music. You can tell the player to turn off after uh, 10 all the way up to 120 minutes and it will turn off on its own. No user input required. The multifunctional output again is a uh, option for the second 0.5 millimeter port. So when you have it set to line out it uh, effectively doubles what the headphone port does. You know, in the other menu was talking about, you can have a fixed level or a gradual level controlled by the uh, volume control. Now, you can set this to coax out. So you can have a coaxial uh, output there. Now, FIO gives a special connector that converts this port to a coaxial connection so that you can have a, a digital output on this. Uh, that ties in with the uh, SP diff out. Now I didn't get this little cable, but it's basically a little short little cable like that, and you can have a digital output. Now for the SP diff out, you can have D2P or DOP. Uh, I've never used this before. I don't have the cable, so I can't try it anyways. But it does give you that option. And file name display, you can choose between displaying through the title, which is in the file metadata, or the actual file name. Now this USB mode is how the player interacts with your PC. If you have it set to storage, then it just reads it as an ordinary flash drive. You can copy files to it, delete files. But if you have it set to DAC, now this allows you to use the player's inbuilt amplifiers and DAC as a uh, USB sound card, which I think is really nice. Uh, you can use this high sound quality from your PC and um, you have to install a little FIO driver on your computer and it gives you all kinds of op options like bit rates and um, sampling rates. Uh, it really does improve over the default sound card of your uh, computer. This sounds great and I've used it a couple of times. It's a very nice feature. And support inline headphones. This, so if you have a pair of headphones with a uh, inline volume control switch, 
if you have if you have that set to on then the inline volume control can control the uh, volume of the device theme it gives you a bunch of themes to pick from they're all pretty nice I have it set to uh, theme one because that's my favorite one but uh, theme two is also quite nice they're all basically a set of skeuomorphic themes kind of like iOS 6 tier see you have one that looks like leather one that looks like blue jeans and wood theme one looks the nicest I think it's kind of like an industrial kind of machine feel reset media library it just resets your entire library clears out all the meta information this is your about player version serial number and such format you can delete all the content from your SD cards and reset to factory defaults now for the music playback settings so this device supports many different uh, file formats if you look on the back of the box here it talks about uh, supporting WAV, APE, WMA, ALAC, FLAC, DSF, DFF now personally I've uh, only uploaded M4A and MP3 and FLAC audio files to this device and they all work very nicely when you start up a song so here I am in my album I click on that it briefly shows you the uh, specific information about the track and its uh, format so I move on to the next one see it says FLAC 48 kilohertz 24 bit and for every file that you start it will show that uh, little message there briefly at the bottom you have your song name artist album there's your duration of the song you get a nice uh, full screen album art image although because the screen itself is not a perfect square it crops in just a little bit the EQ settings they show up when you start a song and right now I've got it set to custom and so it'll say EQ custom but if you have it turned off it'll say off playing the song you can fast forward by holding the bottom two reverse and fast forward buttons with the screen turned off you cannot fast forward or rewind the volume buttons also double as the skip track buttons so if you just go like that it'll adjust the volume but if you hold it it'll move on to the next track there it is on the next track if you press the uh, special functions button it'll show you everything you can do with this song so the heart is you add it to your own little collection your favorites this one you can make a uh, playlist if you like um, you can shuffle it these, these are actually your play settings rather so you can repeat it uh, sequence shuffle repeat once and so on and then you can delete it to adjust volume with the scroll wheel you have to hold in the select button and then you get the option to adjust volume if you just move the uh, scroll wheel without pressing the select button you can go through your audio tracks now let's talk sound quality so sound quality wise the audio is very well balanced there's no hiss and instruments don't drown each other out in dynamic music however I found that this device is not very well suited for electronic music like techno the bass is present but it's not very thumpy because of its mellow sound this device is more suited for classical and acoustic music genres the headphones you use will also make a big difference so to get the most out of the feel you'll need some pretty high resistance cans I personally carried this device every day for a couple of months when commuting and my first observation is that it's pretty heavy it goes well in a jacket chest pocket but not a pants pocket after an hour of listening it also gets pretty hot so it probably would not be great uh, to carry this in your pocket during the summer headphone jack is very tight and well made 
so headphones won't be unplugging on their own. What I don't like is the UI is a bit slow when there's music playing, especially on tracks with higher resolution album art. It can take a few seconds for them to open. Some people in the hi-fi community have modded the UI for these X5s and made a custom lighter weight version that makes it a bit quicker. So it might be worth a try in the future. Overall, I'd recommend this if you like niche audio devices with hobbyist features.